OK, the um, intermediate value theorem. Well, uh, uh, this just says that um, if you've got a function um, uh, which is continuous over a range from A to B, and um, uh, then it assumes every value between f of A and f of B. Now, um, I was a bit confused about what you were asking about, because you were uh, talking about proving it using the Bolzano theorem, and well, the Bolzano theorem is just the, um, the same theorem, the intermediate value theorem, but for y equals naught. So um, uh, the proof of using that will just be trivial. You just take f of x and subtract off y, and um, that's continuous as well, and, uh, and that will just give you the result. Um, so uh, you're also not about using Cauchy sequences. Well, um, yeah, you can do it uh, using that. Um, because if you notice, um, in general, this is not going to hold in Q, because if you look at the case of um, y equals x squared, uh, there's no value corresponding to y equals 2 in Q. It's got no solution in Q. So um, that tells you that you're going to have to use uh, the properties of R and the particular property one of the particular properties, anyway, is that every Cauchy sequence converges. OK, so let's do it. Um, well, uh, without loss of generality, that's what that means, you can assume, assume that um, y naught is less than y1, because if it isn't, just relabel it, because otherwise we have to go through every possibility. So um, let's do that. And uh, let our naught be a and u naught be b. And look at the interval how naught to u naught. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. And then construct another interval and so on. Now, uh, for any interval, um, li, ui, we look at the midpoint. And if the midpoint is is uh, less than y, then you construct a new interval, um, li plus 1, ui plus 1, where uh, the lower point is the new midpoint and the upper point is what it was before. Otherwise, you do it the other way around, and you set the upper point to be the midpoint and the lower point to be what it was before. So what you're getting is, um, if you notice, is a, is a sequence of Li, Li, and Ui. And Li is always increasing, and Ui is always decreasing. And in particular, um, f of Li is always less than or equal to y, and f of ui is always greater than or equal to y. And you just repeat this process indefinitely, and you'll get this uh, sequence of li and ui, which we'll then use on the next page. OK, so um, we've got these two sequences, li and uh, ui, and um, they're both Cauchy sequences, and we know that because they converge. and uh, they converge because, of course, one is always increasing, the other is always decreasing, and the distance between them uh, tends to zero, so they must converge, and therefore they must be Cauchy sequences. And so they must converge to a value uh, like C in R. We also know that um, f of Li and f of uh, Ui uh, can't equal Y, because if it did, we'd, uh, we'd have found the value of Y we wanted and we could stop. So uh, we can assume that f of Li and f of ui is, is not equal to y for any particular value of i. So can we say that um, it, the limit, f of, uh, we we'll call it c, f of c, can we say that's equal to y? Well, uh, no, we can't, because um, if the function was discontinuous, it might jump at the point c and miss the value of y altogether. So we we'll have to take care of that problem from the uh, by using the... Um, uh, continuity of the function. So um, let's suppose that um, it didn't equal y, then what could we say about it? Um, then uh, because it's continuous we can choose an epsilon and we choose the value of epsilon, here it is, it's not equal to y, that value at c is equal to 2.5 and y perhaps is down here. So we choose a value of epsilon which is is about half the distance between uh, the value of the function and the value of y. Okay, so it lies in there. So by continuity, there exists a delta such that um, whenever you're within delta of c, you are within the function is within epsilon of f of c. And um, what else do we know? Well, 
um, we know that Li and Ui converge to C so because C is the limit of Ui and Li as well uh, we know there's a particular value of n so that whenever um, i is greater than n Li is going to be within delta of C and similarly we know there's another value uh, probably a different one for you where um, whenever i is greater than that value of n Ui lies within delta of C so we take the maximum of those two values of n and then we know we've got a, an interval from Ui to Li that lies entirely within C ah, but we know that f of the lower interval is less than y right? so because it's less than y it must lie out, uh, outside here and, or if uh, the r value y was above uh, we know that the upper um, f of the ui down in here was above uh, y and so therefore it, that can't be the case and so um, continuity says that um, f of c would have to equal y now um, there's a couple of other things I should mention um, uh, there's something called the um, bolzano weierstrass theorem and uh, when you were talking about that I wondered if you meant that instead um, that basically says that um, uh, if you've got a sequence uh, that, that's bounded and this one would lie between A and B so it's bounded then there is a convergent subsequence you're guaranteed to have a convergent subsequence somewhere in it um, which is uh, perhaps a little surprising but it's true uh, don't forget for sequences you can have um, uh, very strange things for sequences unlike a sequence of rational numbers you can have which would fill the entire region in here for example that obviously has got a lot of convergent subsequences an infinite number of them so uh, sequences can be very dense and cover the entire area um, but anyway um, the bosonov Astral theorem if you apply it to psych like Li, you can show that it's again convergent to C without resorting to Cauchy sequences but it's mass the same thing really because they're quite connected ok I think that's about it